Thank you to SwitchBot for sponsoring today's video. SwitchBot Curtain is a small wireless robot that makes your curtains motorized and so smart. Installation is super easy and simple and it just takes 30 seconds without any screws, nuts, or bolts. After it's attached, you can either program it to open and close your curtains on a schedule, you can use the included remote, or even use your smartphone. It works with voice controls for Alexa, Google Home, and Siri if you pair it with their Hub Mini. SwitchBot Curtain is the world's first retrofitted smart curtain. It's the pioneer of the retrofitted smart curtain category, and it's even been awarded Good Design and Idea Awards. The rechargeable battery lasts up to eight months once charged. So if you're looking for a simple way to make your home smarter and your day maybe a little bit easier, why don't you check out SwitchBot and the details in my description box below. Thanks again, SwitchBot, for partnering with us. And now on to today's video. Hi, welcome to Yobi's Home. Um, today, I wanted to make a really fun video about the top 10 Dutch foods that you must try if you haven't already, as well as three that, you know, we can stay away from. So if that sounds good to you, why don't you come on in, kick off your shoes and stay a while. I'm really glad you're here. For today's Dutch word of the day, um, actually there's gonna be 13 of them, all the 10 favorite foods and the three that I, not my favorite, um, those are all Dutch words. And so you are gonna be having a Dutch heavy lesson today. Let's get into it. First up, you have to try Ayrton soup, also called snert sometimes. Um, this is the Dutch pea soup. Maybe it's not so beautiful to look at, but my goodness, is this baby tasty. I actually made it on my channel, so I will link that somewhere here. So if you wanna see how I made it, you can check it out. But to be honest, most of the time, I just buy one of those packages of soup and I cut up an extra Hema Rokvorst because I like that smoky flavor. And that's it, it's delish, delish, you must try. Up next, we have a seasonal favorite. The next, uh, next up, we have a seasonal favorite. This is usually when the months are getting a little bit colder and you need a little something to get you through the day. That is when you stop at an oliboli kran, no, olibol kran, and get yourself um, a Dutch donut. These are just plain and with some powdered sugar on top. They are perfection. Um, if you want to ruin perfection, you can also put raisins or krenten in them, I guess, if you like that kind of thing. I would put that on the do not eat list because I don't like raisins, but you might like raisins. And so who am I to judge? If you like raisins, go for it. Um, but oliboli, olibolin, I keep calling them olibolis because that's like my nickname for them. But olibolis, I can't, I can't call them the real name. Olibolin are just delish. Must, must try. Up next, Dutch pannenkoeken. Pannenkoeken. <laughs> pannenkoeken. I don't know why I can't talk. I'm just going to blame it on my braces. But Dutch pancakes are completely different than American style pancakes. Um, you have savory and sweet versions, so you can definitely have both. But just the way that they're made is so different. Like in the States, our version of pancakes, you put everything together in the batter. Like you would mix up all the ingredients in the batter and then cook it like that. Whereas Dutch pancakes, you have the batter, which is probably the same for everybody. And then the toppings go kind of on top. It's more like a pizza pancake or like a pancake that looks like a pizza because it actually has toppings on it. So absolutely delicious. My favorite is the bacon and cheese, um, so yummy, but the sweet ones with like apple and other things, they're also delicious. Dan made me try a pancake with bacon and cheese and then he put cinnamon sugar on top and you might think that sounds nasty, but actually best, best combo ever. Try it, try it. This could not be a list about Dutch food if we did not include stroopwafel, <laughs> caught myself there, stroopwafel, which is like probably the Dutch national cookie, not to be confused with the waffle. Dan, can we insert that little TikTok we made here just to, just to compare the two so people know? I think that would be fun. Here you go, enjoy. Here's the most famous and tasty Dutch cookie. 
But did you know that there are two types that look incredibly similar, the syrup waffle and the strope waffle? The syrup in a syrup waffle is thinner in consistency than the strope in a stroop waffle. In a syrup waffle, the two waffles are baked separately and then the syrup serves as a glue. It's crispy. The strope waffle is baked in one piece, sliced in half, and then filled with strope. It is chewy. But no matter what you choose, they are super duper yummy. Lecker, enjoy! So yeah, strope waffle are really good. You can definitely get them in the supermarket, but if you're gonna eat a strope waffle, the best place to do it is to buy it like at a market, fresh, hot, steamy, so good. Croquetten, that's up next. Croquetten are super, super tasty. It's kind of like a ragu or like a, it's, it's a mixture of many different things that is then rolled up, breaded and fried. And um, Dan taught me that you don't actually just like eat it like properly. You have to put it in a little bread and then squish it like so that all the stuff comes oozing out and it's just delicious. Um, yeah, it actually is really delicious. Now croquetten are oftentimes eaten um, at a bar, like it's kind of like bar food, but also you can get it at the snack vending machines and other things like that. Um, but 100% recommend, give it a try. Um, tons of different flavors. So I recommend them all. Try them all. <laughs> this is one that I didn't, I still, I still don't really understand because it's just so against like what I've been taught in my life, which is um, Dutch people eat fries as a whole meal. Um, that is the meal. The fries are the meal. So that is why it's on this list of 10 foods you have to try because it's, when I tell you like fries as a meal, what do you think? Because I would think of like just like a naked french fry and like a big plate of that, like here's your dinner, um, naked fries. But that's definitely, definitely not what we're talking about here. Um, when Dutch people eat fries, it's very saucy. Um, sometimes it also has like, um, like chicken in it and like all kinds of things. It's like, I don't know, it's like a burrito bowl, but instead of having rice, you have fries. Like it's delicious, really, really delicious. Um, my favorite is from Brahms Ladage, and we definitely have eaten that many a time, Dan and I, when we're working late or doing something and we are traveling or whatever, um, and we are enjoying ourselves some delicious fries. <laughs> Shall we throw in just, just to keep people on their toes? Here's one that I don't like, okay? And I'm not gonna apologize. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this is your favorite, but you know, you enjoy what you enjoy, I enjoy what I enjoy, and that's cool too. Um, but definitely no drop. No drop for me. Uh, none of the flavors of it, it's, I'm not here for that, okay? Drop is a nay on my list. Um, there you go. All right, back to the delicious side. Out smiters. Out smiters are fried eggs um, on bread and they are served open face, but here we eat them for lunch or maybe dinner. Can you eat them for dinner? I don't know, let me know. But I mean, I, I eat breakfast for dinner sometimes, so I got nothing against eating some out smiters for dinner. Um, absolutely delicious. So if you're in a cafe or somewhere and you're craving something warm, especially if you're an international and you're more used to like a, a more consistent or like a heavier um, lunch than the typical Dutch sandwich, um, check to see if you see an outsmiter on the menu. A lot of Dutch cafes serve that and it's gonna kind of be the closest thing that you can get to a warm meal in a Dutch restaurant or cafe at lunchtime. Stamp pot, okay. This is something that is so interesting because there's so many, 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 many different um, versions of it. But a stump pot is basically where you have mashed potatoes and a vegetable, like whether it's kale or carrots or um, red cabbage, like you see that, mixed together with some with the, with the sausage served on top. So that is a stump pot and um, depending on what you like and how you cook it, it's going to be delicious um, and definitely worth a try. We made one. We made a... What did we make? We made something like that on this channel before, but I, I was told that I used the wrong recipe. So I will link it here below, but or above, below. Um, I will link it here above. Um, just know that according to the comments, uh, we chose a bad recipe to make. So if you guys want me to remake that, um, let, let me know here and we try something else. 
Let's do another one that I don't like. Um, Dutch sushi. <laughs> At least that's what I've heard it referred to as. It is the haring, which is raw fish and then some raw onions on that. Um, and Dutch people really seem to like that. That is also something that is quite unique here. I'm guessing because we live so close to the sea, we can get some fresh fish and it's, you know, what people are into. It is not what I'm into, um, but you know, to each their own. And finishing out the top 10, we are going to discuss a beverage, chocomel. You must try chocomel when you are here. That is kind of like the Dutch uh, chocolate milk. Um, but what I really like about it is that Dutch people drink it both cold and warm. So in the winter time, you will see a warm chocomel with whipped cream on almost every menu of a restaurant and cafe, and it is so yummy. Kids love it, and yeah. Then you can also just have it cold from the fridge. Uh, they sell it in the supermarket. You can get it in a shop. You can get it everywhere. It is delicious and yummy. <laughs> We're also gonna end out the stuff I don't suggest you try category with also a beverage, and that is Fristi. Fristi just confuses the fuck out of me. I do not understand this. It is called Fris tea, fresh tea, right? Right? In my brain, I'm explaining to you my logic. Fresh tea, but it looks like strawberry milk and it has a bunch of fruit on it. So are you fruit? Are you milk? What the fuck? I don't know, but Fris tea, I just, mm -mm. and it's sold in vending machines with like sodas. Like, are you a soda? Like a milky, Strawberry soda? I don't get it, but no, not for me. Thank you very much. So I'll take a chuckle now and I'll leave the I'll leave the fristy behind. You guys, thank you so so much for watching. That completes this video. Let me know what other foods do you think belong on this list, both lists. I want to know what is on your yes list and what is on your no list, and um, if there's something that you think I should try. Do you want me to bring back a cooking video or try to make some other Dutch food? Let me know. Big thanks to my husband for sitting here eating so quietly while I film this video entirely about food. Um, oh, and I see now I also didn't put all the toys away, so I hope you enjoyed that crazy pool toy um, here in this random video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Thank you for coming over. I really appreciate any time that you spent with me today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. 